you've spoken before on the various um, facets that contribute to the success on the raw diet. And uh, will you please speak on the possible psychological reason for yo-yoing on raw um, and what we can do to help facilitate success on the living diet, both mentally, psychologically, emotionally? Well, I, I think when you get onto a raw food diet, you plug into uh, the energetic universe that all other creatures live in. So it's sort of like jumping on a wild horse that you're not familiar with riding. And so part of it is that, that it's a newfound energy. Uh, number two is sugar. And that is really why the gyration or the OYO goes on. And we see that at the Institute every single week, 52 weeks a year. Because this is such a high protein diet. It's an amazingly pre-digested amino acids are available. Goes into the cell with a green drink as an example, regulates blood sugar. So every week, this is no embellishment, people say to us, I was a massive overeater. I could never stop eating. I'm not hungry. What's wrong? And what's not wrong is they're regulating blood sugar with proteins. So that's another good thing. I mean, when I first became a raw fooder, my favorite food was dehydrated organic pineapples. When the day I found Madule dates, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. You know? <laughs> And I didn't stop at eating one or two. You know, I'd go back to the health store, well, I'll get one tomorrow. No, I would go back and get another pound of it. So eating those types of seductive sugar drug things, you're going to yo-yo with this thing. And I think your diet was profoundly good for what she's discussing. Lots of nuts, lots of seeds. She grinds them up, makes them easy to digest. Really, really sensible. And if you ask what she ate 30 years ago, I'm sure she ate the way you did and I did and everything else. You know, you sort of learn these things. You go, either you quit doing this or you learn how to do it. And that's really what it's going to take. It's going to take you experiment and trying, following the kind of things that you hear us say. Uh, look at the Hippocrates program, read the books that we've written. And it sort of gives a blueprint, an outline of where you could possibly make this easy for yourself. It was about uh, 42 years. 42. 42 years ago that I ever ate anything like that. Yeah, you were like me. You right. Were, yeah. <laughs> Typical Canadian diet. Remember no, Canadian I bacon? I, st <laughs> I started eating healthy, like really consciously healthy, uh, when I was about 17. Oh, yeah. You, so you two are common. Yeah. emotional thing because th because other people don't eat like you <laughs> so that is also one thing that um, other people get feel intimidated by you taking a choice and eating different so you know we have a lot of there we have six psychology sessions we have group sessions for our guests and I think a lot of this helps everybody too in our weight loss yeah. program we actually do particular type of psychology not that you would need that but, I mean, we have an entire specific weight loss program that, I mean, you'll lose more weight on our program than anything on the planet. But the reason is it's psychological yeah. more so. And, and, and here's something I learned 25 years ago that I went right over my head. I was brought up by a really wonderful mother. She loved me. I never doubted she loved me. She was there every time I came home. But you have a mommy factor in this thing. My mommy, who I trusted and loved and never doubted, told me that, the very things I was going to abandon and found were bad were good for me. Eat meat, it's good for you. Eat dairy, it's good for you. So you have the substance problem of getting rid of the addiction to the substance. You have the social problem that Anna Maria just mentioned. But more so, you have the mommy problem. So until I came to that realization, I, I'd say, why do these highly intelligent guests who actually see, their, we do blood tests at the beginning and the end, Radical shifts all the time. There's ne never not a blood test that somebody's, you know. We the average drop in cholesterol during a, a three-week period, it's really only two weeks between blood tests, two weeks in a day, is 50 points. Yeah, we see blood sugar regulate in five days commonly, commonly. But even with that, how come they keep cheating and going back? Because mama told them. <laughs> and I'm, and, and I that. think the other thing is, is that... Um, I think one of the, the, the strongest human needs is the need to belong Acceptance. within your family, your tribe, your friends. 
And, and I think some people would sooner die than not belong. You're right. Um, and, and that need is so strong that the, the only way I think of getting around that really is, is to, um, I mean, some people create a new tribe. Exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. but most of us don't want to do that. We love our families and we, we you know, and our friends and we want, is, is I think is really to, um, to, to love them, but to share our wonderful food and, yeah. and to make foods that we know will be appealing and, and beautiful and, and just make it a part of their world as well. You don't give them a sprout salad, you give them a veggie burger. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's it. <laughs> and it, it works. It's it's interesting how open even the family members that you would think are completely closed. I can remember a couple of Christmases ago making three or four different kinds of fermented cheeses and the sprouted, um, you know, dehydrated crackers and and I remember making. I mean, this was you know a treat for Christmas, but. Um, the, the like turtles with pine nut caramel with pine nut and oh, yes. you know that kind of thing and, and the family um, they were just thrilled to think that they could have these kinds of foods that were actually reasonably hel much healthier than the whatever they were replacing and so they were quite excited about it mm. and, and I think when you do it in that way where you're not pointing a finger and you're not making people exactly. feel badly but you're, sh you're sharing with love and excitement some really delicious food. <laughs> we learned that phytonutrients get destroyed as you cook them, as you cook the vegetables. How about steaming and making soup? Is that, does that destroy the phytonutrients also? There's lots of ways to kill something. You can either shoot it right out or torture it, but at the end of the day, it's dead. That's uh, simple. <laughs> we have polite words for killing, you know, <laughs> blanching, baking, but you know. Now, the mark line is about 115. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep it below, nothing wrong with soup. You know, I'm, I'm cold when I'm up here. This is not a normal weather for, for us. So you could actually take vegetables you like, blend them up. You're going to kill a lot for this, but this is recreational stuff we're talking about. You blend it up, you put it in there, and heat it to 120, 115. As long as you don't spike it above that, then you still have the phytonutrients and the enzymes and everything else that you want. And it's still a warm soup, and it actually tastes better than, than the, w when you cook it. When you cook it over, do it. Try this. Do this experiment worldwide. Take, blend up your favorite things, put seasonings in, heat it to 112, about 41, 42 Celsius, and eat that, and then take the same exact thing and cook it. And you're going to see there's a, a foul taste to the cook, we're a rich and comprehensive taste to the raw, or yeah. semi-raw, I would as say. As long as you can, uh, if you can <laughs> test it with your pinky into the pot, you're fine. <laughs> then it's less. And dehydrator is your new oven. Dehydrator, you keep it at 115 Fahrenheit. So by that time, you know, you're, you're keeping the phytonutrients, the enzymes, hormones, oxygen. You're keeping it. Um, you have so much fun. I mean, we use it at the Institute every day. It's a part of crackers and nuts and seeds that's been soaked, sprouted, and with the de dehydrated, so we can keep them. You seem to use yours a lot, too. And yeah. we make, um, um, yeah, pâtés, and, you know, it, there's so many things that you can make. Depends most upon things, what you're doing. Well, most things take 24 hours. The nuts, the seeds, if I make bread, I make raw bread in there. Take a grain, even a grain that has gluten, like rye, if I soak and sprout it, now there's hardly any gluten left. So now I put it through the juicer, or if you have a, um, a, a, a what do you call the other one? Uh, well, Quasinart. Quas Quasinart, or yeah, I can put make crackers, uh, and, but I can also make bread, then. but I cannot make thick bread because it will totally ferment too much. But there's no limit. I can make veggie burgers in there. I mean, we have a lot of fun with that. Our kids are brought up with that. So I'll just add a few things. Um, so when you, when you cook um, with phytochemicals, certain phytochemicals um, you know, will certainly decline. They won't disappear completely. Uh, some phytochemicals, uh, for example, the carotenoids, actually are more available in cooked foods than, say, a raw carrot. Less available than a juiced carrot, mind you, because you're, you're, you're removing cell membranes if you're juicing. 
and so it becomes very, very bioavailable. But carotenoids generally, you'll increase the absorption a little bit. Now, with the other thing to know is, is the enzymes in foods, like myrosinase. So if you take broccoli and you eat it raw and chew it well, you'll get a lot of conversion of the glucosinolates to, z to the isothiocyanates like sulforaphane, and, and you want that to happen. So if you cook, as soon as the, you know, the steam hits the broccoli, your myrosinase isn't all destroyed instantly. It, it, is, it slowly diminishes over time. So if you're, if you're steaming and you steam for a very brief time, you'll still have reasonable activity. So again, if you're cooking, you want to cook for as little time as possible, and you want moist cooking methods more than dry cooking methods. The other things to know is it, the other thing to know is you lose probably 40 or 50 percent of um, uh, maybe 30 to 50 percent of, of uh, minerals in water, and but but more up to 70 or so percent of vitamins, especially like vitamin C, which is lost very easily with cooking. So you'll also lose some vitamins and minerals. Now, if you're doing a soup. Of course, you'll retain the minerals in, in the water, so that's an advantage as well. There's this fun little trick. There's a steamer containers. Black & Decker did make them. I don't know if they do, but you buy, they're not expensive, $40, $50. You plug them in, and they tell you on the side uh, to steam it, and it's perfect steam. Somehow they've made it in a way that geometrically it steams perfectly, that you put in a half a cup. So the trick we pulled off, we put in a quarter of a cup. So now it's a bit cooked on the outside, but as you pointed out, probably, I don't know what the number is, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of it is not cooked on the inside. So now, if you're fighting cancer, maybe that's not what you do, but the average person. Now, the reason I ask is I have food problems. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. getting them taken care of. Yeah. I can't chew anything hard, no broccoli or carrots. Yeah. The only way I can eat them now is if I soak them up. Yeah. Well, that's, and but your point is a, not just a personal point. Uh, after 50 years old in Europe and North America, 60% of the population has some level of periodontal disease. So it gets increasingly, I mean, kids have bad teeth, but after 50, 6 out of 10 people have it. So it gets increasingly harder to eat raw food at that point. So, and the sad news is the blending research shows if you blend it up, even for a short time, you're oxidizing, killing most of the nutrients. Not, I'm not sure, not as bad as cooking. I don't know that. That's my opinion. It's not a fact, possibly. But the fact is, it's much better to do that than it would be to eat the typical diet anyway and mush things up. Now, we, one of our favorite cooked foods is baked, baked squash. Now, is there much in it? No. But the reality is it tastes damn good. <laughs> <laughs> still a lot of value with yeah. you you are able to get a lot of, of a variety of carotenoids and exactly. it's it, and and it, I think it's a uh, a wonderful food so there are a lot of foods that are I mean you're not completely destroying the value of a food when you prepare especially steaming uh, vegetables mm -hmm.